Ashlyn and I am so excited to be teaching the session with you. So in the session we're diving into topic number 48 on prayer. So let me just pray for us and then we'll dive straight in. Father, we just thank you so much for the incredible honor and privilege of gathering together around your word. Lord, we thank you that it is not only your desire to talk to us, that you are always speaking to us, but it is your desire that we would engage in a conversation with you, that we would actively talk to you throughout the day about the things that are important to us and about the things that are important to you. And so, Father, we just ask that as we study your word in the session, Lord, that you would teach us, that you would train us, that you would equip us for a life of prayer. Lord, I just ask that where there has been any hindrance in our prayer life or any belief systems we have that is not true and not accurate, Lord, I just ask that you would break them down, that you would dismantle it and that you would replace it with truth that tonight we would be established and grounded in truth, that we would be able to pray prayers that are so bold and so confident that they would be so based on your word with a knowledge and an understanding of who you are and your heart and desire for us. And so, Lord, we just thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he came and that he died on the cross for us so that we could access your throne room. Lord, that we could have access to you and we could come before you with boldness and confidence. And so, Father, we thank you that every block has been removed in Jesus. And so, Lord, tonight we want to lay hold of that. And Father, in this session, I just pray that you would stir within us such a hunger and such a desire for the secret place to spend time with you in prayer in the name of jesus amen so welcome everyone in this session we are diving into topic number 48 on prayer and i am so excited for this topic because prayer is one of the i feel absolute key components to our relationship with god because it is our relationship with God is not just a one-way street where it is only us talking to God or only God talking to us. It's a two-way street. It's a conversation where we speak to him, we hear his voice, he speaks to us, and we can engage in this conversation. So let's look at a definition of prayer. In your modules, prayer is defined by the means by which a Christian can voice to God his fears concerns, pleas for help, and thanksgiving for blessings received. So very simply put, prayer is just talking to God. It's just having a conversation with God. And sometimes our prayer will be around one specific thing. And sometimes it might be around a few different things all at the same time. But I, when I think of prayer, I often think of Moses. And how Moses would talk to God face to face as one would talk to a friend. And so for me, that is the place that I go to. That is the, the feeling, the sense I have in my heart. When I come before the Lord and when I engage in prayer, I can almost picture myself sitting face to face with God as I would with a close friend talking about the things that are important to me, talking about the things that are important to him and having this back and forth conversation with him. And so just like our conversations with our friends would cover a few different elements and have a few different topics to it, so does our conversation with God. It's not just a case of we come before God and we ask him just for what we want and we go. That's not a conversation. <laughs> That is a shopping list. And although we do come before God with requests, we engage in conversation with him because it's this engaging in a conversation with him that we grow, that we grow into the likeness of Christ, that we grow into the person that God has called us to be. And we grow in our understanding of his heart for us. So let's look at a couple of the elements of prayer. Number one, it's adoration. God needs to be exalted in prayer, acknowledged as the supreme being and the only true and living God. 
you know, just as you would sit with a friend who has done something amazing or very brave and you would say to them, wow, like when you did that, that was incredible. You did it with such excellence. Like you were amazing. You spoke beautifully. You set it up in such an incredible way. Like, wow, this is such a reflection of who you are. We approach God the same way. We need to come before him with adoration to acknowledge and honor and worship and just celebrate who he is. And so when it comes to God, we exalt him in prayer. We lift him up. We celebrate who he is. And part of that is acknowledging that he is number one, a supreme being, and number two, the one and true living God. And so this acknowledgement, this adoration and celebration of God is such a beautiful and important component and element of our prayer lives. The second one is confession. We must acknowledge our sinfulness and our sins to God. He cannot forgive. He cannot not forgive when we do not ask to be forgiven. And so this is the beautiful thing about God, that he is such a safe place for us that when we have messed up, when we have made mistakes, when we have sinned and we have missed the mark and fallen short of his heart for us and his desire for us and his standard of righteous living, we can come before him and confess our sins to him. We can tell him and express where we've gone wrong and how we've messed up and how it is different to his heart and his design, his standards for us. And the beautiful thing is when we ask God forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness and all of our sin. And so confession is a huge and important part because it's in our confession to God of our sinfulness, of our shortcomings, of where we've missed the mark and we've messed up that we actually begin to realign ourselves with God. We begin to realign ourselves with who God has made us to be and who we are to be in Christ. And there is you know, this beautiful thing that happens where it says like, Lord, I have gone this way and I have messed up and I have missed it. But in confession and confession of sins, like we actually realign ourselves with God and with his ways and his plans and his purposes. And he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so the next one is thanksgiving. We must thank God for his multitude of blessings. Thanksgiving is such a huge element that I feel like is being lost in the generations that are coming up. And it feels like if this is not something that has been actually modeled for you in life, not a lot of people are really, really good at it. And I have a few key people in my life who have beautifully and incredibly modeled thankfulness. When you do something small and seemingly insignificant, they will send a message to say, hey, thank you so much for doing this. It was such a huge blessing or thanks so much for what you said or the encouragement you gave. And it has been such a growth point for me to actually realize like, hey, we actually like people are doing something we need to see and acknowledge and actually say thank you for the things that they're doing. And likewise, in our relationship with God, Thanksgiving is this beautiful um, part of our relationship with him where he is constantly doing things. As children of God, we walk in abundant blessing. And he is constantly speaking to us throughout the day and proving himself strong and faithful and sustaining us and protecting us. And so we actively need to thank him for these things because it's in thankfulness that we don't take things for granted. We don't just be presumptuous or come across entitled. It's We are actually thanking and acknowledging and honoring and celebrating what someone has done for us. And so likewise, in our prayer life, it is so important to take time just to actually pour out our thanksgiving to God for who he is, for what he's doing in our lives, our home, our families, our workplace, our community, and to actually say thank you for those things. The next one on your list is supplication. And these are our requests that we bring before God 
whether they are requests that are personal for just us or on behalf of someone else. And this is the thing, God wants us to bring requests. He wants us to ask, and we're going to touch on the scripture a bit later, but if we don't ask, we're not going to receive. And so there is this place that in asking, we actually, again, align ourselves with God, with his heart and his desire for us. And we say, yes, Lord, we want the same things for us that you desire for us. And we are engaging with you in this. We are having a conversation about this and we are asking you for these things. And yeah, supplication and asking is also a beautiful and important part of our prayer life that we actually we need to ask and when we ask we we don't ask timidly or afraid or oh lord could you maybe if you got a gap no we are children of god and so when we ask things we ask with boldness and with confidence and yeah with full assurance that he is going to answer that he is going to speak so the next one on your list is submission and we must submit ourselves to the will of God. See, as we can ask God for things, he will always answer. Sometimes his answer will be yes. Sometimes his answer will be no. And sometimes his answer will be wait a bit or not just yet. And so this is the beautiful thing about God. He is always speaking. He is always answering our prayers. Sometimes the answers we receive from God are just not what we expected. Sometimes the fulfillment of a prayer doesn't always look like what we thought it would look like or what we expected it to look like in our own minds or in our own eyes. And this is the element of prayer where we actually submit our wills to, to the will of God, where we actually submit and say, God, this is what we desire. This is what we need. This is what we're trusting you for. But in your timing, in your way, in the way that you can see it come to pass and fulfilled. And unfortunately, I feel like sometimes we miss answers to our prayers because it doesn't come the way that we think it will, because it doesn't look how we expect it to look. And so in submission to God in prayer, there's this place where we bring our requests and our supplications before him but we also surrender to him to fulfill it and to answer it in the way that he seems best. And so we almost submit our own ideas of what we expect it to look like to the Lord. And we say, Lord, fulfill it in the way that you think, in the way that you see it needs to be done. And show us, let us be aware of when you have answered this prayer in your way, in your timing. And again, this is where Thanksgiving comes in, because if we are constantly having an awareness of what God is doing, of what he's pouring out into our lives and just the blessings of the open doors or the provision or the favor that he's extending upon us, we will not miss his answers, even if it does look different to what we expect. So these are the elements of prayer, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, and submission. And so sometimes our prayer life will incorporate all of them. Sometimes it might focus on one or two elements. But remember, as with everything, balance is important. And so I would put a challenge to you that if you feel like you've gotten a bit stuck in your prayer life or you feel like your prayers are only adoration or only supplication or only confession, I want to encourage you to almost use this as a bit of a framework to grow your prayer life, to engage with God on these different levels of adoration, confessing where we've missed the mark and messed up, thanksgiving for all the blessings he's putting pouring into our lives, supplication and asking him for the things that we need in life and ultimately submitting our lives and submitting our requests and our wills to the will of God. And it is through this journey of prayer that we are changed, that we actually grow in our relationship with God and we actually grow into the person that God desires us to be. So that is a challenge for you if you're a bit stuck in your prayer life 
or if you want something really practical that you can do to grow in your prayer life. So now I want us to look at some other things that can very practically help you in your prayer life. So number one is to remember that the Holy Spirit will help you in your prayers. And this comes from Romans 8 verses 26, where it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You know, sometimes there really are times when we want to talk with God and we want to engage with him and we want to pray about something, but we just, we don't know how, or we just feel like we don't have the words to say, or we just don't even know how to express this thing. And this is where the Holy Spirit comes in, is that he helps us. He intercedes for us. He helps us when we actually don't know what to pray or how to pray. And so as believers, we have the Holy Spirit. We have a counselor. We have a help. We have a guide. And it, we actually need to engage with him more in our prayer life to say, Holy Spirit, this is what I'm praying to. I don't know how to pray. Can you help me? Give me a strategy of how I need to pray into this or just, you know, where I lack the words. Actually, Holy Spirit, will you intercede on this behalf for me um, and help me through this? And so he is there. He is there to help. And he is a really important part of our prayer life as well. The second one is we need to ask according to the will of God. So we're not just asking according to the desires of our hearts, according to our needs, according to our bank account. We are asking according to the will of God and we find the will of God in the word of God. And so we pray when we pray, we pray according to the word of God. And this is found in 1 John 5 verses 14 to 15, where it says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked for. And this is a beautiful thing because when we pray according to the word of God, according to the will of God, we pray with a greater confidence knowing that, well, I'm praying the word of God. So God not only hears me, but he is also going to respond and he's going to answer the request that I have. Again, might not be in the way that you think or you expect, but he will answer because we are praying in alignment with his will. We are praying in alignment with his heart for us. And how I see it is that we pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the door that, that gives us access to the Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, because he's the one who empowers us according to the word of God. And so here we see a beautiful component of the Trinity and the word of God coming together in our prayer life where we pray to God through Jesus Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit and according to the word of God. And so again, if you get stuck in your prayer life, go to the word of God, find whatever portion of scripture you're busy reading and studying and actually use that as almost like a script to pray into and to pray to God and pray back to God. And that will also be another great starting point for you if you find that you're getting stuck. Next one is to spend time alone with God. And this we see in Luke 5 verses 15 to 16, where it says, However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and a great multitude came together to hear and to be healed of him, or sorry, to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. You know, I feel like in this day and age, there are so many things that are vying for our attention. And with countless screens and social media and marketing and everything, it is so easy for us to get into a place where we are just so overstimulated and so distracted. And this is where it is so important for us to learn from Jesus 
so many people were wanting him were going after him because they needed prayer they needed healing they they wanted what he had they wanted to hear the words that he was speaking to them but even in the midst of the busyness even in the midst of the demands that were being placed on him by other people he still withdrew from people and prayed and this is such a huge lesson for us that even in the midst of the busyness of our lives and all the demands that are being placed on us we need to as believers develop a daily habit of withdrawing from the world from all the demands and actually spending quiet time alone with the lord heidi baker once said more is accomplished by spending time in the presence of god than by doing anything else and i love that because it is so true more is accomplished spending time in the presence of God in prayer than by doing anything else. And often we feel like the demands of the world and our life and our family and our jobs just pull so much from us. But it's in the midst of that to actually draw away, spend time with God and knowing that even if it's in the midst of an incredibly busy season, that time you spend with God in prayer, in the word, is the best investment of your time you will get more accomplished in that than you will running around possibly like a headless chicken sometimes trying to do and get other things done because once we have spent time in prayer once we have committed these things to the lord once we have received his wisdom and his truth of what he says about something then we operate from that place and when we operate from that place of prayer and his presence we operate differently there's a peace there's a grace that just yeah things fall into place things happen quicker and easier with less hassle and less obstacles or at least that's what i've experienced in my own life and so as many as the demands are being placed on us we need to draw aside we need to spend time alone with god the next point is we need to live obediently and this comes from 1 John 3 verses 22 which says and whenever and whatever we ask we receive from him because we keep his commands and do those things that are pleasing in his sight and so part of having a beautiful healthy prayer life where we can have open communication with God and we can talk to him kind of like Moses did is that we live a life of obedience where we keep his commandments and we do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Next up is we are to pray in faith. James 1 verse 6 says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And whenever we pray, we need to pray in faith whenever we come and we ask and we bring our requests and our supplications and even our submission and our surrender. We do it in faith. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And this we find in Hebrews 11.1. 1. And so faith is such a huge and important component of prayer. We need to become men and women of faith. And so your last one on the list there is pray with expectancy. Mark 11 verses 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. This is incredible because what it's saying is that when we ask things, right? So it is God's heart and his desire for us to ask things of him. But when we ask things, when we pray, we need to believe that we have received that which we have asked for and we will have them. Why? Because when we pray, we pray according to the word of God. We pray with an understanding and a revelation, not just of God's word and his will for our lives, but with an understanding of who he is, his nature and his character. And when we have an understanding and a revelation of the nature and the character of God, we can pray with such expectation and with such expectancy, knowing that he will hear and that he will respond because that's just who he is, because that's just his nature. 
um, he is faithful, he is true, he is present, he provides, it's, it's part of who he is. And so the word of God is a huge cornerstone to our prayer lives and having an understanding of the nature and the character of God will also give us confidence and boldness in our prayers and in our prayer life. So let's look at the result of prayer. Number one, God answers. James 4 verse 2 says, You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and do not obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Our lives are voice activated. And I think that was Bethany Hicks who said that. And I love it because it is true. Our lives are voice activated. Our answers to prayers that we need or our desires or like the destiny that God has for us is voice activated. God answers. He always answers. But in order to answer, we need to ask. And we often don't have things because we don't ask. And so this is where we need to come before God. We need to ask and engage in a conversation with him around his word, around his will, his desires for us. And we need to ask because he is faithful to answer. The next one is you are built up. Jude 1 verses 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourself up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. One of the beautiful results of prayer is that as we engage in this conversation with God, as we talk to Him, that we actually get built up on the inside. Our spirit man gets built up. And especially when we pray in tongues, and this is where we can come into a space where we pray without ceasing, uh, which is your next verse on 1 Thessalonians 5.17, because we can pray in tongues because we are constantly living in that place of engaging in a conversation with God that we are actually built up as a result of praying. And so praying doesn't kind of bleed us dry. It doesn't sap our energy. It doesn't take things away from us. Engaging in prayer with God actually builds us up. It actually puts more and more back into our lives. And underneath that, it says, stay in power. And so we touched on 1 Thessalonians, but 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18 says, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. So a result of prayer and praying in tongues is that we are staying in this place of being of power, of being empowered by the Spirit. And that is an incredible space to be in. The next one says, it keeps us in Christ. John 15 verse 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. So when we engage in prayer, we are actually abiding in Christ. We're staying in this place where we are in communion with God himself. And Prayer is a beautiful thing that actually keeps us in the presence of God um, because as we abide in him and his word abide in, uh, abides in us, this is also a component of where we read the word of God, we study it and we pray it, that we will ask what we desire and it shall be done. And even here, we see that we can ask with confidence, with boldness, with an expectancy because it will be done, not because we're just asking for whatever we want, but because we're asking according to the word of God and because we're asking according to the will of God. So in summary, it says much prayer equals much power, more prayer equals more power, little prayer equals little power. And so the more we spend time in prayer, the more we are empowered, the more we are built up and the more power is actually released through our lives when we are praying for people, when we engage, like the more we spend time with God, the greater increase of anointing that is upon our lives. And this is God's heart for us. He desires for us to go in power, in confidence, in boldness, in with an expectation that when we pray, when we ask things, 
even if it's on behalf of someone else, even if it's for healing or restoration for someone else, that he answers and that he responds. And so this is where prayer is not just about, Lord, I need this, 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 and please bless my day. It is so much more than that. It is a living, breathing conversation with God. And as we talk and commune with God, we are built up, we are empowered, and we can actually go out in power. And as we talk and commune with God, we submit our will to Him, we are transformed into His likeness, and our heart becomes more like His. We actually get a, a glimpse of His heart for us. And as we spend time in prayer, is really the place where as we spend time in prayer, we actually come into alignment with God. We come into alignment with His will, with His plan, with His purposes for our lives and the people around us. And so in much prayer, there is much power, but in little prayer, there is little power. So let's just pray. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for this session. God, we thank you that, oh, we can come before you with boldness and confidence. We thank you that we can have a living, breathing relationship with you and that the outflow of this relationship can impact every area of our lives. And so, Father, we ask that we would be men and women of God that are strong, that are empowered, that are rooted and grounded in your presence. And Father, for those of us who feel like we have so many demands being placed on us by life and the world and so many things vying for our attention, Lord, we just pray for such a self-discipline to be able to draw aside to spend time with you. God, we just pray for such an increase of a desire and a hunger and a yearning for your presence to actually be with you to draw us out and be in those quiet moments and those quiet places with you. Father, I just ask that as we study and as we read your word, God, that you would just unlock it to us, that you would reveal your will for our lives, your plan and your purposes for us and your desires for us. And so, Lord, we just thank you that we can embark on this journey of prayer with you, that we, we can be transformed and we can come into alignment with your heart and your desire and your will for our lives. So, Father, we just commit this into your hands in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, thank you so much for joining us in this session. I trust that it's going to be good. or I trust that it has been good. And I trust that this will inspire you and just stir your heart to spend more time in prayer. Remember, if you are looking to grow in your prayer life, it might be worth going back to in the beginning where we touched on the different elements of prayer and actually taking some time and going through that adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication and submission and actually working through those so that you can have a balanced prayer life. So may the Lord bless you and may you have many beautiful conversations with him.